All right. Good news, bad news. The good news is I finally got a math question for the first time in months. Not that I'm bitter. Uh, so I can finally make a math video. The bad news is uh, this is a much higher level than I've been working on. This is an algebra question. And so far, I have not even told the plot line of my algebra curriculum. So I don't have the Lego set up or ready to go or anything like that. But I do have this cool Emmett meme in the background. And uh, most of you feel that way about math. So I'll just leave that on the screen. And then it totally counts for uh, teaching with Legos. And you know I match Emmett. So that'll be great. And hopefully I can get this all filmed in one shot because it's already past my bedtime. I mean, adults don't have bedtimes. Obviously, that would be weird. Uh, so what I want to teach about today is solving using completing the square. And before we actually talk about how to solve, I just want to make sure we understand that they're no different conceptually than this type of question here. Okay, I have an equation, equal sign stuff on both sides. I have something I don't know. And I want to find out what that something is. So if we look on the right side, most of us don't even need to math that. You're like, well, if x plus 1 is 5, x is 4, hashtag duh. And that's very much true. That's also true over here in that if you can think of a number that when you square it and then add it to negative 6 times itself, you get 91, negative 91, then that's the same thing we're doing. We're just trying to find a value of V in this case, or K or X or whatever it is, that makes this statement true. So that four plus one really does equal five. Whatever answer we get, we want V squared minus six V to really equal negative 91. So that's the idea. Um, and it's something we can do algebraically, but then it also could be done uh, graphically. So that same basic example, I want to know where x plus 1, that red line, is going to be 5. And so I already am talking about x. So if I just graph the line y equals 5, then this point right here where they intersect is my answer. You should be very suspiciously noticing that this answer is at four. Exactly what you knew it would be algebraically, it's also that same thing graphically. When x is four, x plus one is five. And so we could come and we could do the same thing over here. v squared minus 6v equals v squared minus 6v. And I want that to equal negative 91. And so I just have to zoom out to see where those intersect. And the one difference with these quadratics, these parabola graphs, the curved lines that show up because some variable is squared, is that sometimes the solution is there is no solution. That red curve and the blue line, they'll never touch. There's nowhere you can go on the red line to get to negative 91. Uh, if we do n squared equals 18n plus 40, n squared equals 18n plus 40. Oh, this one has an intersection. But watch out, because it's a curve, it will have a second intersection way up here. And so there's two different places where that'll happen. So just remember, on a curve, there could be zero solutions. Those things will never, ever, ever meet. The blue and red could never, ever, ever meet. There could be one solution. If that blue line passes right at the vertex of the parabola, 
then the line touches the curve exactly only once. Or there could be two right there and right there. And so just be aware, we're going to solve these all algebraically, but be aware that the answer we get could be there is no answer. Hey, there's this one answer, or whoa, there's two answers. So uh, that's what we're going to be trying to do. And before we jump straight into solving, let me just make sure you've got all the background information you need. So uh, make sure that you could solve these equations here. If I told you to solve a squared equals 144 and you can't do that, you're not ready for this video. You need to go find a video about solving squares. Most of you are gonna say, oh, that's easy, it's 12 which is half right, be careful in solving, I could have either 12 or negative 12 because 12 times itself is 144 and negative 12 times itself is 144. So both of those answers work when I plug them in for A. And so you can list them like that with a comma. The easier, better, smarter math way to do it is to say A equals, plus or minus 12. B, and again, make sure that you already know how to do this, because if you don't know how to do this, this video is not for you. You need a video the step before this. Make sure you can do it then, and also make sure you can do it when it's something goofier. Like, for example, D squared equals 65, all right? Now, if you know how to do this and you're ready for the video I'm about to teach, you know that that means D equals plus or minus square root of 65. And that's fine, I don't need to do anything else. E squared equals negative 20. Hopefully, you're at the point where you have warning bears, <laughs> bears, <laughs> that would be hilarious. Warning bells go off in your mind and you say E equals square root of negative number is not possible. This particular version has no solutions. And then here, f squared equals 9.65. Uh, we're just going to take the square root of 9.65. And let me type that in here because I don't have time for math. Uh, this equals square root of 9.6, that's a 5, 6. Ooh, cool, I gotta read. Good thing I don't teach reading. And then just remember that it could be a positive whatever answer or a negative whatever answer. Uh, so make sure that you know how to solve problems like that already. If not, go learn that first and then come back and watch this video. For those of you who are still here, let's take a look at uh, the next thing. The whole point of completing the square is to get an ugly looking equation like x squared plus 9x minus 72 equals 30 to equal something simple like something squared equals something mysterious. Uh -huh. So again, completing the square is just the cool mathematician's way to get that top ugly equation to look like that bottom equation. All this is to do, like the whole point of everything I'm about to show you is to get this to look like that, because if that looks like that, then we're not gonna have a problem solving it because we just solve it like we solve these. So that's the goal. Before I break it down to talk about how we do that, let me make sure you understand some pattern things. Everything that we're gonna do involves binomial squares. Binomial means two different things separated by a plus sign. So I put a bunch of examples. X over here, a plus or a minus sign, something else over there. And I'm squaring not each of those by themselves, I'm squaring the whole thing. Again, if you don't already know how to do this, then that's a different video. You need to email me so I can make that video for you. 
but I want to talk about what those solutions look like to make sure we're picking up on the pattern. So take a look at all of those answers here. Every single one of those is going to equal something and look at those answers. What you should notice about those answers, and I'm going to keep talking just so I can get this done. Uh, you might not have already noticed it by the time I say it, but if you look back, then you'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, now that he said that, I can see that. You should see some clear patterns. The first pattern I want you to see is that that last term, the whole number at the very end, is always positive. And look at what I'm plugging in. It doesn't matter if I plug in a plus something or a minus something, the last number is always positive. Every single one of those is positive. Positive, positive, positive. Doesn't matter what I put in, last number is positive. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's part of the pattern we're about to apply. And then in the middle, if you're thinking positives, negatives, you can see that it goes, oh, positive, negative, positive, negative. But really that's only because what I plugged in was also positive, negative, positive, negative. So don't get hung up on that, but look at that set of numbers for a minute and tell me if you don't see another cool, interesting and very helpful observation about that second number that's next to the X. What is it when I plug in three? What is it when I plug in four, five, six? Hopefully you're noticing that whatever number I plugged in, that middle number in front of the X is just twice as big. And that's true. The pattern that we're gonna take advantage here is anything plus anything else all squared is gonna equal that first anything squared plus double the two things times together plus the anything else squared. And that pattern holds every single time. If you don't understand that, don't worry yet, but do email me so I can make a video for you later. Um, I'll tell you how it's gonna apply. So let's jump in and let's Let's learn how to use our computer. That would be great. There we go. Well, let's talk about number 13. Right. Number 13, I want to be able to say all of this is just something squared. Remember, that's my goal. Because if I can get it to say something squared equals some mystery number, all I have to do to solve it is take the square root of this, take the square root of that, put the plus minus sign in front, and I'm done. Yay! So how do we do that? We take advantage of that pattern I just showed you. That middle number, the number that has the variable, not the squared variable, but just the plain variable, that's always going to be twice what used to be in there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards and we're going to start with this and go back to that. So on number 13, it's already got the V next to it. So I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to cut this thing in half. Make sure you keep the sign with it. This isn't a six in front of a V. It's a negative six in front of a V. I cut that in half and I get negative three. So that's the first step, it's really important. And now look carefully at this second step. What I wanna do is I wanna square that negative three and add the result to both sides. So negative three times itself is gonna be nine. So I'm gonna add nine and I can't just randomly add nine to an equation if they're equal, I have to treat them equally, so make sure you remember to add nine to both sides. And then what you'll notice is that if I put all this in a group, I would have something squared, and then I would have two times something else with a V next to it, and then I would have that same thing squared. 
which means I can simplify this down to say v minus three all squared. And that right there is the heart and soul of completing the square. You added something, not random, something very particular to that side of the equation so that you could magically get something that looks like this. And then don't forget, we did that same thing to the other side. And so negative 91 plus 19 is gonna be something. I wish I could math faster in my brain. Let's think. Uh, plus 20 would be negative 71, but I didn't go negative 71, so negative 72. Okay. And now, if you notice, I have something on the left equals something on the right. And I have something squared equals some mystery number which is awesome, now I just solve it by taking the square root of both sides. And in this case, it's extra awesome because when I try to take the square root of negative, it's not possible. So the answer to number 13 is no solution. And remember, we said that's a possibility. And I know 14 is gonna have solutions. We graphed that earlier. So we're gonna do the same thing except, and this part's important, Make sure you get all your variables all on one side of the equation before you try to complete the square. So n squared can stay here, but 18n can't be on the other side. They have to be on the same side. I'm gonna subtract 18n from both sides. n squared minus 18n equals, and then these canceled out, uh, so it's just going to equal 40. Now this should look familiar. Now I can solve it the same way. So walk yourself through the steps slowly. First thing I do is find the n that doesn't have the exponent next to it. I cut that in half. That's going to be, come all the way down here, negative 9. Then I square that, negative 9 times itself. And what do I do with that result? I'm going to add it on this side because that's going to make my magical perfect square. And don't forget, I have to add it to both sides. So on the left side, I see I have something that when I look at it carefully, there's a perfect square in front, a perfect square at the end, and the two things multiplied together and doubled in the middle, that all just equals n minus nine squared. And that's equal to whatever 40 plus 81 is, uh, 121. And now we're golden because I have something in the middle of a square that equals some mystery number. So I'm just gonna take the square root of both sides. I take the square root of both sides. Doop, 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 and I get over here where I have more room, n minus nine equals plus or minus 11. Okay. Don't forget to add your plus minus because if I had negative 11 squared, that would equal 121. If I had positive 11 squared, that would equal 121. So in an equation, the square root of 121 isn't just 11 like we always learned. It's plus or minus 11. And now... I go back to just regular old algebra. Remember, I said it would be as easy as solving those square root ones. I lied, sorry. It's that easy and then also solving again. Because I don't care what n minus nine equals, I wanna know what n by itself equals. So I need to add nine to both sides, add nine to both sides, and be very careful here. n equals nine, 
plus 11 and nine minus 11. Your plus or minus doesn't change. And so I get two different answers. N can be negative two, nine minus 11. It can also be 18. Oops, <laughs> that was a lie. Um, children, this is what happens when you try to talk and math at the same time. Nine plus 11 is definitely not 18. It is 20. So uh, we're going to pretend I got that right the first time. And yeah. Okay. So uh, if you're good and you're ready to roll, go ahead and stop the video now. Start solving on your own. If not, I'm going to go two more examples. And if you still don't get it, email me so I can help you out. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to solve all four of these problems basically together. And we are also going to uh, just sort of write out the steps as we go. So step number one. And let's put that here. We want to get the square variable and variable together on the left. Get the number on the right. And then this part didn't come up in the first one. So let me put it in all caps. Make sure the square variable has no Coefficient. Okay. So get the square variable and the variable together on the left. Uh, square variable is already here. I need to move this over. Square variable is already here. I need to move this over. Square variable is already here. I need to move this over. Squares already here, variables already here, numbers already here. 17, that first step is actually done for us. Yay, thanks, 17. Uh, down here on the bottom, square, variable, check, but I need to move the number over. Square, oop, I need to move the variable over. Okay, so everything that has a variable on it needs to go to the left, and everything that doesn't needs to stay on the right or in some cases, go to the right. So here I'm going to get uh, 12x to the other side by adding it. I'm gonna get 48 to the other side by adding it. And so I'm gonna end up with 6x squared plus 12x plus 48. So it's equal to positive 48. I'm just moving stuff across. Number 15, I have 5k squared. And then I add 20x to both sides. I said x, but I meant k. And that equals 60. Number 17, remember we said is already good. I don't have to move anything there. And then on 18, how do I get rid of an 18, a negative 18n? I'm going to add 18n to both sides. So 9n squared plus 18n. And I don't want that 79 there. So I have to subtract it to get rid of it. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Same thing down on number 20. This is just going to equal negative 67. And over on 19, I need to subtract 8a. So 2a squared minus 8a equals negative six. Okay. Make sure I get the variables all on the left side, the numbers all on the right side, and then, oh, I have a decimal there. Uh, I need to make sure that there's no coefficient in front of the square variable. This is a problem, this is a problem, 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 
problem, but it's an easy fix. If it's a five, I'm gonna divide everything everywhere by five, okay? Make sure you don't do it to just one thing because if the two sides are equal, then you have to treat them equally. If you divide anything by something, you have to divide everything by something. And so up top, it's gonna to give us k squared plus 4k equals, well, divided everything by five so that this variable with the square has no coefficient, even though secretly there's a one there. Same thing on this next one, x squared plus two x equals eight. Uh, down here, two n squared plus two n equals, and then this is gonna be a fraction. And quite frankly, it's too late in the day for me to deal with that, but we've got at least to this step and you could kind of see how we would do that. Same thing here on this one, x squared minus five halves x. Eh, this will be our basic intro video, so we're not gonna deal with fractions in this video. Down here, uh, a squared minus four a minus three. And then up here, x squared plus two x. And then, uh, whatever 42 divided by eight is. And so don't get me wrong, you absolutely can follow all these steps with fractions. Because I gotta go to bed. We're not going to. So 18, thanks for coming. Goodbye. 20, thanks for coming. Goodbye. And 17, thanks for coming. Goodbye. We'll just keep working through the rest of these. And we'll put up the next set of steps. Huh? So make sure that if you don't know how to start them, you at least know how to do step one. Make sure you can get it to look like it looks here on the screen. Everything on one side, if it's got a variable, no coefficient in front of the variable with the square. Step two is going to be, we need to complete the square. That's still kids. Complete the square. And this has steps to it. Cut the variable coefficient in half. Then square that result. Add the squared result. This is important to both sides. Be more important if I could type, I guess. So step two, I need to make sure that I can do this as well. So first thing I do, cut it in half. 4K, cut that in half, I get two. Look at the coefficient in front of the variable, not the square variable, just the variable. If it's negative 4A, make sure you keep that sign with it. This is not a four in front of an A, it's a negative four in front of an A. I cut that in half, I get negative two. Two X, I cut two in half, I get one. Okay, so cut the variable coefficient in half, square that result. Two squared is four, add the result two, and this is where most people go wrong. They add it to one side, get all excited about completing the square, and forget to add it to the other side. Make sure you always, 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 do whatever you do to one side of the equation to the other side of the equation. Look at number 19, I don't even have an equation. What was I doing down here? Probably, hopefully erased it. Hopefully it used it. Oh no, I forgot to move the three over. Do, 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 do. 
So uh, if anyone asks, I definitely added three to both sides and didn't mess that up, if they ask. Right, so I have to square negative two, that's four. I add that to both sides of the equation. And so what am I getting here? Well, over on this side, I have k plus two all squared. Let me put that in line. Okay. So k plus two all squared. And it doesn't equal 12 anymore because I added two to both sides. It equals 16. On number 16, I had an x in front. So it's x plus one all squared equals not eight. I added one to both sides, nine. Number 19, a minus two all squared equals seven. So I am done with step two. And then I just need to solve using opposite operations. So I guess I'll use the green here. Next. So using opposite operations. And the first opposite operation is always going to be to square root because that's the opposite of squaring. Opposite of squaring something, square root something. Opposite of squaring something, square root something. And if I do that to the left side of the equation, what do I always, always, always have to do? The same thing to the right side of the equation. Thank you. So if I look at number 17, I'm going to get plain old k plus two, the square root cancels the square, and it's equal to, don't think four, on an equation, it's gonna be plus or minus four. But that's not all of my opposite operations because adding two has an opposite. What's the opposite of adding two? Subtracting two. So I solve all the way down using opposite operations until the variable is by itself. And then watch this very carefully. I'm gonna put it up here so I got plenty of room. K equals plus or minus four, remember it was plus or minus, minus two. And that means K is gonna equal plus four minus two, which is two. And minus four minus two, which is negative six. Why are there two answers? Don't forget what the graph's gonna look like. 5k squared equals 60 minus 20k. 5k squared equals 60 minus 20k. 5k squared equals 60 minus 20k. 20k. So I zoom out. Hey, look, the blue line and the red line cross. Hey, look, the blue line and the red line keep going. Hey, look, the blue line and the red line, they cross again. Oh. So X over here has a solution and X down where it crossed the other place. As a solution, a straight line will cross a parabola up to two times. Not all straight lines cross it two times. Some don't cross it at all. Some cross it once. But in this case, I see there were definitely two different times. And so that's my answer there. And I have to do that no matter which of these problems I'm looking at. So on number 16, took the square to both sides, square root cancels a square, x plus one equals, don't say three, don't you dare say three, plus or minus three. And I'm not done yet because I don't have x by itself. The opposite of adding one is subtracting one. 
So x equals plus or minus 3 minus 1. Plus 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Those are both true. And so I have two answers in the solution for x. And down on number 19, square root cancels a square. So a minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 7. Okay. Remember, I said you have to be able to solve it even when they're goofy. So I can't simplify square root of 7. The only difference is I add that plus minus because positive square root of 7 times itself would be 7. And negative square root of 7 times itself would also be 7. I don't have a by itself yet, so add 2 to both sides. a equals 2 plus or minus 7. And this is cool. Sorry, square root of 7. Because I don't have a way to write what square root of 7 equals without rounding, if it doesn't say to round, I'm done. I don't even have to write the two separate answers. I get to use that cool plus minus sign, and that tells me it's got two answers. So if that helped, use it, learn from it, do great. If not, email me, and we'll figure out what you need help with. Bye. Oh, wait, 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 wait. And Lego. Okay, bye.